Let me tell you about a mistake I see all the time, and that's using CPU intense plugins for tasks that just don't need them. And by far the biggest example of this is low cutting rumble, taking a high pass filter and filtering out the unneeded low frequencies, which is something you do to pretty much everything in the project. Everything apart from the bass, the kick, and maybe the odd sound effect as well. Most things don't need those frequencies. And so if you have say a synth, for example, with some low end rumble, as you can see, that's not helpful. That's not adding to the sound. It's just getting in the way. And therefore we remove it with a high pass filter. We don't need these frequencies. And so we remove them. Importantly though, on almost everything in the project. And so if you have a project with 80 or 90 different tracks, maybe you might have 70 different instances of this, 70 different simple high pass filters. And so maybe whilst one plug in EQ is not a big deal, when you have 70 of them, it becomes a big deal. And importantly, in most normal situations, you won't hear the difference. You may think you hear a difference because it looks nice. I mean, if you take say Pro Q2 or Pro Q3, it looks nice, but for simple tasks, you just won't hear a difference. And if you don't believe me, run some tests yourself. The real power of these plugin EQs is the advanced features. In the case of Pro Q2, as you can see, it might be the ability to AB curves, or maybe you want to change from minimum phase to linear phase EQ, or even natural phase, or even snap cutoff values to a keyboard position, as you can see. And of course, plugins are just nicer to use. They feel more enjoyable. And if that's important to you, great. But if you're having CPU issues and that's because you've got 70 of these, maybe give it a second thought.